The goal of this video is to introduce you to the basics of computer wireless networks and Wi-Fi standards that are currently in use, as well as to make it easier for you to choose appropriate wireless network equipment. Wi-Fi is often thought to be an abbreviation for wireless fidelity, but there is no such thing. The term was created for marketing purpose because the wireless industry was looking for a user-friendly name to refer to some not-so-user-friendly technology known as IEE 802.11. Over the years, various 802.11 companies and task groups have been in charge of revising and upgrading the original standard. Each group has assigned a letter from the alphabet for each specific standard, but unfortunately not adhering the alphabet order as we can see in the next table. In the past, the main goal of each upgrade was higher data rates and faster speeds. As we can see in the table, 802.11b introduced data rates of up to 11 megabits per second, 802.11a and 802.11g introduced data rates of 54 megabits. 802.11n, AC and AX enhanced data rates much further. In 1999, first computer wireless networks were commercially introduced. 802.11b was the most commonly used standard at the time and had very low speed, up to 11 megabits per second, which was much lower than most Ethernet wired networks at the time. However, there were no Wi-Fi mobile devices, no smartphones or tablets, and very few laptops, so 11 megabits per second was fast enough. In 2007, the first iPhone was introduced by Apple and smartphones became ubiquitous. After a very short time, smartphones became popular and it was obvious that Wi-Fi upgrade is required. New Wi-Fi generation was officially named 802.11n today also known as Wi-Fi 4. It should be mentioned that a new naming convention for Wi-Fi was introduced in 2018, which significantly facilitated the recognition of Wi-Fi standards. The 802.11n standard brought theoretical data rates of up to 600 megabits per second and supported both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. To achieve such huge increase in speeds, New technology was introduced known as Multiple Input Multiple Output or shortly MIMO. Probably the easiest way to recognize MIMO Wi-Fi routers is the fact that they have two or more antennas, each using its own radio frequency range. In other words, data transfer speed was increased by implementing multiple transmitters and receivers on a single device. Previously, Older Wi-Fi access points had only one antenna and were single input, single output or abbreviated SISO devices. Today, when you hear the term Wi-Fi router, it refers to a multifunctional device that includes a cable or a DSL modem, a router which is a device that enables data transfer between our local home or office network and internet, firewall, which provides basic protection of our local home network from internet attacks, and wireless access point. We can compare wireless access point to a hub or a network switch in Ethernet cable networks. Without it, our clients like computers, smartphones, IP cameras, etc. would not be able to connect to our local area network. In other words, there is no Wi-Fi network without an access point. In 2013, 802.11ac standard, which is Wi-Fi 5 by new naming convention, was introduced. It was not very well accepted because of lack of backward compatibility. It did not support 2.4 GHz frequency, but only 5 GHz devices. Although 5 GHz radio signal provides higher data transfer speeds, in case of Wi-Fi 5, it is up to 6.9 gigabits per second. On the other hand, it has a relatively short range and usually cannot penetrate more than one wall. Because of these, 2.4 gigahertz is still very popular. If we put a Wi-Fi router with 2.4 gigahertz support in the middle of a house or apartment, almost certainly all rooms will be covered 
with the Wi-Fi signal. Not only that, 2.4 GHz radio signal easily covers up to 15 meters outside house, which can be convenient for IP Wi-Fi surveillance cameras. In short, don't buy routers that support only Wi-Fi 5 standard. Simply to have support for 5 GHz frequency and not 2.5 GHz is not enough. In that case, Wi-Fi 4, although older, is definitely a better choice. Besides improved data transfer speed, Wi-Fi 5 also brought new technology. Multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. Or abbreviated MU MIMO. All older Wi-Fi standards were designed to serve one device at a time. For example, let's say that we have five computers connected to Wi-Fi router. Router would send and receive data from the first computer for a few microseconds, then it would switch to the second computer, after a few microseconds it would serve the third computer, and so on. Just to mention that data transfer speed between specific computer and MIMO Wi-Fi router will depend not only on capacity of router, but also on the fact whether the computer's network card supports MIMO technology. With multi-user MIMO, for the first time, Wi-Fi routers were able to simultaneously deliver data to different clients, like computers, smartphones, IoT devices, etc. However, Wi-Fi 5 and multi-user MIMO were just first step toward full-duplex simultaneous communication between Wi-Fi access point and clients. Wi-Fi 6 standard not only increased speed and added support for both 2.4 and 5 GHz frequencies, but also introduced OFDMA technology, which is used in 4G and 5G mobile networks. So in Wi-Fi 6 we have multi-user MIMO and OFDMA, which gives an incredible advantage in case when we have a big number of devices connected to Wi-Fi router. Wi-Fi 6 is great for offices, cafe bars, airports, and in the future will probably be very beneficial for homes. We talk about the future when almost all home appliances, including TVs, refrigerators, air conditioners, light switches will be connected to the Internet. In these circumstances, OFDMA technology, which is supported by Wi-Fi 6 standard, will be extremely useful because it can split data streams, also called channels, into smaller sections. You might ask, why is this important? Why should we split, let's say, 20 MHz channel into smaller ones? Well, devices with Wi-Fi support like light switches, washing machines, refrigerators don't need a lot of bandwidth. For them, most probably a few kilobits per second will be quite enough. On the other hand, TV or laptop on which we watch Netflix or YouTube in high resolution will consume really a lot. It is important to mention that installing Wi-Fi 6 router will bring a big improvement for all of you who play online games. Multi-user MIMO and OFDMA technology, which is used in 4G and 5G mobile networks, will provide a more stable signal and minimal latency comparable to Ethernet cable connection. For the average user, investing 200 US dollars or more for a new Wi-Fi router might not be the best decision. By the way, the picture shows Asus Wi-Fi 6E ROG Rapture GT AXC 11000 gaming router. Many average users today won't be able to notice the difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5 routers with backward compatibility like the one in the picture because they support both Wi-Fi 4 and Wi-Fi 5 standards. Although declared as Wi-Fi 5, these routers are dual band, which means that they work both on 5 and 2.4 GHz frequencies. Also very important, at the back of the device all Ethernet ports are 1 gigabit. Unfortunately, there are still many Wi-Fi access points and routers with declared wireless speeds over 1000 megabits per second, but have only 100 megabit Ethernet ports, which of course means that clients will have internet speed up to 100 megabits per second. So it is important to pay attention to these details before shopping. Currently, the price of TP-Link Archer C80 is about 60 US dollars. If you live in a large apartment or a house, even when you have placed the Wi-Fi router in the middle, 
it is possible that some parts of home are not covered by the signal. We have two solutions in this case. Wi-Fi range extenders, also known as Wi-Fi repeaters, and mesh Wi-Fi system. Wi-Fi repeaters are affordable, usually cost about 40 to 50 US dollars, and relatively easy to install and configure. Actually, you just need to plug a Wi-Fi extender into the wall socket, which is near the end of your current Wi-Fi coverage area. Then connect to the extender's SSID and configure it via web application. Each Wi-Fi extender has its own SSID, in other words, its own Wi-Fi name, and that is one of the drawbacks. This is a problem because when you move through the house, you will have to switch from one SSID to another, and many smartphones are not able to do this seamlessly. Another great drawback of Wi-Fi range extender is that all devices connected to it will have up to 50% of your Wi-Fi bandwidth. If you think that a Wi-Fi repeater is not a good choice for you, another option is mesh Wi-Fi system. It usually costs 150 US dollars or more. It consists of two, three or even four identical wireless access points that are specially designed to flawlessly communicate with each other and provide full internet speed in all parts of your home. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for viewing.